Okay. <clears throat> Should uh, oh. be on any time now. Okay, we're on. Very good. The regular meeting of the Central Avenue Special Service District Advisory Board will now begin. Good morning. My name is Mike McLaughlin. I will be facilitating this meeting of the Central Avenue Special Service District Advisory Board. Before we begin, I'd like to note that this meeting includes the remote participation of members as authorized under Minnesota Statute Section 13D.021 due to the declared local health pandemic. Call this meeting to order and call the roll so that we can verify the proceedings. Advisory board members, when I call your name, please indicate that you're present. Now, All right. Hold on, Michael. You're kind of going in and out a little bit with your microphone, so I don't know if other people's phones are kind of taking over. Yeah, those of you that are on the phone need to mute. Yeah. Um, if I mute you, just be conscious of that. <laughs> and then if you need to say something or you want to chime in, just make sure you're not muted first. So. And, and then if, if you dial in, it's star six, correct? to unmute. Yes. Okay, so I'm gonna, I think, mute you, the two people on the phone, so. Well, we have to, hold it, before you do that, we have to answer his roll call. Okay, well, <laughs> predicament here. All right, let's do the roll. Uh, Linda, if you. Well, actually, I'll, Catherine, can you say present? Present. David, you can mute her. <laughs> I think she's fine. I think it was Linda mostly, but okay. Uh, yeah. Um, John Higgins. Present. Present. John Lasaria. I'm present. Linda McDonald. She's muted. We know she is present. She um, is present. Uh, Scott McCleary is not yet present. Um, Evan Sally. Present. Uh, Linda is present. Got it. Thank you, Linda. Uh, okay, I'm remuting. Thank you. Uh, Patty Grell is not uh, uh, present, and uh, Joe Surasuk is not present, um, but they may yet join us. Um, I will note that we are also joined by Andrew Carlson and David Bauer, uh, as well as guest Christine uh, Levins. Um, the first order uh, on the agenda is the adoption of the agenda and the acceptance of the minutes. They can be done individually or uh, they can be done in one motion. Um, a proposed agenda and draft minutes to the prior meeting were distributed in the meeting packet and posted to the city website. Um, are there any modifications to the proposed agenda or the draft minutes? No. Hearing none. Um, uh, would someone like to make a motion to approve the draft agenda and the minutes to the prior meeting? I so do. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. I didn't see who that was. John. John, thank you. Sorry. Um, you. All right. Um, on the motion, if there's no further discussion, I will call the roll. So I have to say uh, each uh, board member's name and then uh, how you vote so we can record it uh, on the audio. Um, Catherine Bakke. Sorry, my phone kicked out. Run that by me again. What am uh, I voting? We're voting on the motion to approve the agenda um, as drafted and the draft minutes to the prior meeting. I second. No, I approve. Very good. John Higgins. I approve. On Lasaria. I can vote yes. Linda McDonald. Approve. Very good. Uh, Scott is not here. Evan Solly. Linda McDonald approved. approved. Thank you, Linda. Evan, did you say yes? Uh, yes, I did. Oh, sorry. Apologize. Uh, Got a couple things going on here. Um, very good. Uh, the other board members are not yet in attendance. Um, that the agenda is approved, as are the minutes to the prior meeting. Thank you. Um, next is our public comment period. Um, uh, we have not been joined by any members of the public. Um, Scott's uh, jumping in now. Dean Levins. Um, and I don't believe Christine wants to address the group during the public comment period. Um, Scott, welcome. 
Um, we uh, just approved the minutes and the agenda. Um, so we are on to our first discussion item, which is the 2020 annual report. I am going to uh, share my screen uh, and we will quickly go through this. So in the packet, we included your 2020 annual report. Um, it also was uh, presented to City Council uh, back in March. Through. Um, so it follows the format from prior years. We list the board members, the role of the board. Uh, in the summary of services, I'll just hit a very, uh, very quickly hit a few highlights. Um, we did have 56.4 inches of snow um, in 2020. That included um, the beginning of the year and the uh, October through December. We did have snow in October. Um, on the landscape maintenance, um, we did uh, water all of the planters uh, throughout the growing season, including uh, weeding those planters. Um, and we filled the reservoir bags on 33 um, young boulevard trees uh, with water weekly. Uh, in terms of the, I'll zoom that in a little bit, um, in terms of emptying the public, uh, the trash and recycling receptacles, um, we did remove um, almost 3,400 cubic feet of trash uh, from your trash receptacles, your district maintained trash receptacles, and uh, over 7,000 cubic feet of uh, recycling material from your 13 district maintained um, recycling receptacles. Um, we did the pan and broom service 35 times uh, May through October, resulting in just under 500 cubic feet cubic feet of trash removed from the district in addition to doing the seasonal cleanups in May and November and removed um, uh, 268 instances of graffiti uh, from the public right of way over the course of the year. Uh, we did, of course, also then under uh, decorative lighting, uh, light approximately 70 street trees um, in October. Um, and uh, they were obviously the prior years were removed uh, earlier in the year in March. Um, and then uh, we did do the banner inspections um, through, throughout the year. I'll keep moving um, and we can come back to questions. Financially, um, the group had an amended budget of $193,689. Um, the, the district actually spent $128,505. So there was a year in surplus from 2020 of $65,184. Um, those dollars, as has been the practice, um, um, uh, were carried forward uh, to the 2021 budget. And you will see this in a moment on your amended 2021 budget. Um, so those dollars are available uh, to be spent this year if needed. Um, otherwise, they, you can continue to carry forward that surplus. Uh, again, historically, that has been uh, mainly used for uh, snow reserve fund um, to uh, help offset uh, increased costs in those high snow accumulation years. Um, and then the district map is the final piece. Um, any questions on the uh, 2020 annual report? Okay. This is not uh, an action item, so there is no action. Um, so we can move on then um, to the 2021 work plan. I'll zoom in a little bit here. Um, so uh, this is. For, oh, was there a question? Okay. Uh, this is your amended 2021 uh, work plan. So again, your original budget that you uh, recommended last summer uh, was $125,500. Um, you see that carry forward reflected here of that 65,184. So your amended 2021 budget is $190,684. Um, again, consistent with that policy of rolling those forward, those dollars forward to be available uh, for snow. Uh, we allocated um, the entirety of the surplus to your uh, sidewalk snow and ice control services line item, though we do have the flexibility to um, uh, allocate those dollars and other line items um, if, if desired. Um, just a couple of work uh, uh, work plan items related to this year. All the sidewalk planters um, have been planted um, and obviously the maintenance has started on those. Um, we um, all the tree lighting uh, except for one block was removed um, in March as we normally do. Um, the one block that uh, we haven't yet removed of the tree lighting, although the lighting is off, is the block around the second precinct. Obviously, the uh, the there was fencing and barricades around the precinct 
um, that is just uh, now just starting to come down. Um, so we didn't have access to the trees to remove those lights, but we will do that uh, over the next uh, couple of weeks. Um, a question I had um, as things are opening back up, um, last year we skipped all of the, um, the, the corrugated plastic banners for events um, on the low level poles. Um, is there any desire to, uh, looking at this summer and into this fall, um, is there any desire to restart those, um, uh, those, those uh, low level banners? Um, so embedded in that is a question of, um, um, you know, if anyone knows the status of open streets, if there are other, uh, any other events, um, and Christine, I, uh, a question for you would be related to the um, the Northeast Parade. Um, if there's an update there, because those are the events that we've done the banners for. So that was a question that uh, that we had. Um, thoughts on the call them the the temporary low level banners. Well, we would need to know what events are actually going to take place before we make banners, right? Yep. So no parade. No parade. Okay. Oh, so no parade this year? Yep. Announcement um, in the Northeaster on Tuesday. Oh, bummer. <laughs> yeah, but we're going to do some other fun stuff. I'll tell you about it later. Um, I think Open Streets is planning to proceed in August. So the only event that we actually have a banner for would be open streets in August? Uh, Should we just make nice northeast? Put them on the low for the whole summer? Could do that. Thoughts by thoughts on that idea? <coughs> I would pass on the banners this year. Just not put any up at all. So do we have any I don't banners? Think we need we already, they're just a matter of putting them up like the district banners. Uh, these were um, because they were event related and date specific. Um, most of these were redone each year to correspond to whatever the date of the event was for that year. So um, these um, the, the exception were the Celebrate Northeast banners, which did not have a date on them. Um, or no, Destination Northeast, I believe, are the most recent ones we had. And um, I believe we still have those. So those could, in theory, go up. Um, so at, at that point, it would be the, there'd be no printing cost. It'd be the cost of the installation. But nothing's up now. Uh, on the low level, nothing is up. The high, your metal banners are still up and um, I would say just do nothing, just save that money or use it elsewhere. Oh, I would say let's celebrate Northeast ones up and leave them up the whole season. So we have something fearful working. Yeah, Christine. I, I tend to agree with Kath. I tend to agree with Catherine on something positive being up. So um, we're going to reinvigorate um, the Destination Northeast campaign. Um, my colleague Julianne Kaufman is going to get after that. So I wouldn't hate having those back up at some point in time. Especially with people now starting to come out and walk a little more. And I just think it would look nice to have something up. What would be approximate cost? of putting them back up since we already have them printed? Uh, we're likely looking at some number less than a thousand bucks to put them up and take them down. I vote to put them up for the whole season. Other thoughts? I mean, I'm fine with if we have the banners, I'm fine putting those banners up. I don't think we need to print anything though. No, nope, we'll just use the ones we have. All right. So I'm sensing consensus um, that if 
presuming, and I believe this is correct, that we have the destination northeast, that um, the group would like those to go up. We'll bring them, we'll pull them down in October like we have historically. Um, and that's what we uh, that's what we'll do for this season. And then as we get into planning for events for next year, um, you know, we'll just have another conversation probably early next spring um, in terms of anything um, if the group wants to sort of return to the, the past and do events or do a, uh, you know, print banners and put them up for any events that are planned for the corridor. So I don't know that we need an exit. Uh, we don't need an action item on that. We'll just make a note that that was consensus um, since it, um, it was already in your budget. Um, so that um, that's something we can proceed with. And if they don't exist for some reason, um, we won't put them up, and you'll know why they weren't go up. If you were with that. All right. Um, uh, moving beyond temporary banners, um, we um, are the rest of the work plan. Uh, we are planning to do the the decorative lighting, um, obviously uh, this fall. Uh, as we normally do, uh, we're doing all your pan and broom services as we normally do, your graffiti abatement, all of that is on the same schedule. Um, in terms of trash and recycling, uh, that is certainly something that we have modulated in terms of the service frequency as needed, you know, throughout the pandemic. Um, just, you know, if it wasn't, if we could dial things back, that was our disposition. You know, just to save the district some money, obviously, if we didn't need to be emptying things as often as we were. Um, so, but the current um, frequency um, seems to be working, which is three days a week during uh, during the summer, uh, for those items. Um, and then the, um, we'll do the, the fall cleanup, you know, so essentially it's our normal work, uh, work plan for the year. Um, I would note that we will be rebidding both um, uh, the, your, the district streetscape maintenance contract for uh, going into next year, as well as the snow services contract going into this fall. Um, so please know that um, pending the outcome of that, uh, the district may have a different, uh, a different uh, vendor supplying um, one or both of those services. So um, we'll just keep the group posted uh, via email updates. Um, as we go through that process, it's going to take us a couple of months, uh, several months to get through both of those uh, procurement um, uh, procedures for both of those contracts. Michael, before we get too far past the recycling. Yeah. They never did come out and put recycling signs on our blue recycling thing. And so it's still ending up with garbage. For two years, I've asked you to put recycling signs on the recycling container. Uh, noted and uh, we'll apologize for that. That had been on the work plan and um, I think just with everything else going on um, that was missed, but we do have decals we can put on there and um, the uh, sound effects of you reminding us just adds to the impact on why we need to get that done. So thank you, uh, Kath. Just mail them to me and I'll peel and stick them on myself. I'm tired of picking garbage out. Uh, we'll get those taken care of. We have, we'll get them taken care of. Uh, thank you, Catherine, for reminding us of that, though. That is why um, we ask these questions of okay. what else. Uh, related to that, um, are there other items um, related to this year? Any work plan items? I don't know if this is the right time, but I guess on Monday night, I noticed someone going around and taking photos and had a light bulb. I don't know who it was. I didn't get a chance to talk to him. And um, he was highlighting a bunch of street lights, high end walking street lights that were burnt out. Um, and I'm not sure, just to make sure this doesn't fall through the cracks, what's appropriate to, to do that. Um. It, it was somebody just in the public that was your sense yeah i unfortunately I didn't get a chance to talk to him i didn't know i haven't seen him before but there and then you know once i noticed him i actually noticed that there's a a fair amount of 
street lights that are on central and then on the side streets that are you know burnt you know they're probably 10 feet up they're burnt out um so i didn't know if there was a a more efficient way to do it at this forum just to have someone you know wa walk through the district and you know take care of it um uh, yeah so uh those uh the best path forward on uh Street light outages is through 311, um, and that's either calling um, or you can use the web, uh, the 311 web page on the, from the city's web page or uh, website. Um, or the city has a 311 app that you can ha use on your phone, and it'll you take a picture of it, it'll capture the location, and it goes right into uh, the 311 system. It, it's possible that the, the member of the public that was taking those pictures may have been using 311, the, the app, and, and, and was reporting those or using that uh, mechanism, or was just noting them to, um, you know, to report to 311. But that Perfect. is far and away the, uh, the best way to do it. In fact, that's what we would do, quite honestly, is we would just go out and uh, note it for 311 because uh, there's a work order system within 311 that is then directed to the traffic division. Um, so those can get taken care of and fixed. So. Great. Appreciate the question, John. Hey, Michael, this is John. Can can you just remind me where we are with the switch over to LED lighting for the Christmas lights? Uh, yeah, so that was done. Uh, we did. We bought all new LED lights last year. Um, and overall, I would say we had a very good lighting season in terms of uh, very, very few outages um, and GFI resets, which is consistent with um, what uh, what has happened in other districts when they have switched over from incandescent tree lights to to LEDs. So all of your LEDs, um, part of the, the initial upfront cost is we buy um, good quality totes that um, the, the stringers are all stored in for the off season and then they're they're loaded on the pallets and secured and stored um, in inside a, um, a a warehouse uh, in a conditioned environment. So um, they're all essentially tucked away for the summer. Um, we do find that um, we have to replace a small number of stringers um, each fall, but it's you know we're talking about you know in the tens, not in the hundreds in terms of what we typically need to buy in terms of replacement. Um, so that is what we would use um, to uh, to to this or will use this fall. Um, and so far our experiences uh, in other districts with the, the stringer um, uh, manufacturer that we are using now that we used in your district, uh, we're able to get at least three seasons um, and perhaps even more um, out of those stringers. Again, sometimes we have a few failures or sometimes there's just damage from, you know, tree and wind action, that kind of thing. Obviously, there isn't a lot we can do about that, um, but um, overall, we've had good success with these LED stringers. That's great. Thank you. Anything else on 2021? Um, this is like uh, this is Joe at Senya Simlek. Yeah. Hey, Joe. I excuse me. Sorry. Um, nothing on 2021, at least the budget. But I had a question about planters. Okay, go for it. Um, let's see. I think I believe we used to have a planter in front of our place, or at least um, you know straddling our place and and Durango Bakery. Um, it seems to have been moved down to uh, Tacuriendo, um, and it kind of straddles um, that and the empty lot of the two burn buildings. Um, how many planters are on a block, and could we get another planter in front of our place, along with you know, again, it could it could straddle Durango Bakery as well. Um, I did notice that there is a planter that. Um, is is not on the boulevard but actually across the sidewalk directly in front of the wells fargo entrance so maybe because nobody's using wells fargo maybe we can pull up that one uh, yeah i think the easiest thing to do at this point is we could relocate um an existing um uh planter because that we could obviously have done with you know next week uh, the um and 
you know, and this is where I think I'll have to defer to Christine, the original deployment, you know, things have moved around just partly because of snow operations and, yeah. um, you know, sometimes the, I mean, they're not super light, but, you know, this stuff does just kind of move around. Um, but um, I honestly, I don't recall what the original deployment uh, spacing was. Um, Christine, do you recall? I have a list somewhere because I think we were really um, cognizant and putting them in front of storefronts where we knew people would water them um, before we were before you all were paying to have them watered. So I can find that out. But I know that there this the spot that Joe's describing there wasn't a pot there. I would I would vote just to move it from Wells Fargo and drop it in front of Joe's. Very briefly, I had two pots. One kind of towards the corner and one at the very end of our building because we got a, over a half a block here. But somewhere years ago, the second one disappeared. So I have one. Why don't I send, I can send Michael and um, Andy and David the original list and, and see if you all want to realign them. Uh, if everybody's comfortable with that, and I, I think our goal now, um, and as you said that, Christine, I am recalling that that was the original sort of uh, placement sort of rationale was uh, the businesses and uh, who would water them or the property owners. Um, so why don't we, uh, based on what Christine sends us, uh, we can do a little bit of redistribution um, and make sure it, uh, we're sort of dispersed. Um, more or less evenly throughout the district, um, but that's something we can easily do and get taken care of in the next couple of weeks. So, Michael, without opening a floodgate of of changes, there is, there is a pot in front of Higgins Insurance that it's like on a tree grate, like right next to a tree, and it's just kind of odd. So it might be worth. I mean, it's between Higgins Insurance and the library. You know, maybe shifting it into the the gap between trees. It's just kind of like it's tilting against the tree that just kind of doesn't make sense. That, that's helpful. Um, any other obvious ones? Um, and the one in front of Wells Fargo, we typically don't want to put them right in front of doors to begin with, so we can move that one too. Um, it, whether that's the one that goes over in front of uh, or near Joe's uh, restaurant, but um, either that or we can, you know, we'll just move them around. We. You know, obviously, people tend to drop off and like right in front of the doors, so we tend not to put them right outside that path. Any other comments on planters? Any other comments on anything related to 2021? Otherwise, we can move on to 2022. Okay. Uh, well, thank you. Uh, moving on uh, to the draft 2022 budget. So this is the meeting that we will ask you to make a budget recommendation for um, uh, for 2022. Um, I have put a draft a draft budget was included in the meeting packet. Um, just for um, initial comments, um, the this budget would result in a flat service charge from 2021 to 2022 um, and, and that the service charge uh, line would be remain at one hundred twenty five thousand five hundred dollars. Um, I did shift. Um, I increased snow just because I thought that one might pop up above a, a sixty four thousand based on the forty eight inches, particularly with the rebidding. Um, we don't know that. Um, and then I um, I dropped um, uh, I dropped the uh, banner fabrication uh, stuff down just a little bit, but uh, overall we're still able to keep um, I think at least in terms of a draft budget I was uh, still thought we could keep the um, the service charges at that flat amount. Um, we uh, we'll keep an eye on the decorative lighting. Um, I, I don't know that we should drop that this year, but going with the LEDs, uh, we might be able to bring that number down in future years um, just because we aren't buying the same number of, of stringers um, each year. So we do still have the labor costs and the storage costs. So, um, you know, they're, they're still, it isn't like we all of a sudden are able to drop that number in half or anything like that. Um, otherwise, I, um, I kept the landscape maintenance and the streetscape maintenance, um, uh, those line items even, at least in this draft budget. Thoughts on the draft budget? 
Someone does have their hand raised. I don't know if that was from before or. I think that was Joe asking about the planter. Okay, that's what I thought. All right. Yeah, that's that's correct. So, okay. Thank you. Hey, Michael, I see that snow removal last year came in at what it looks like 66,000. Do, do you know, have we been over 60,000 the last several years or I, I just don't, I don't have some of the previous years in front of me. Yeah, so we we were just a little bit over. So you're budgeting essentially for 48 inches. So we did go north of that a little bit just because we had the 54 inches of snow. Um, so it, you know, again, an average snowfall in Minnesota or in the Twin Cities is 48 to 50 inches, um, sort of somewhere in there. So you're sort of budgeting right at average. We do have some districts that are um, budgeting for uh, more accumulation just so they are reducing their risk of having a budget deficit. Um, we have some districts that are budgeting, for example, for 60 inches. So at 48, you know, you're really sort of threading the needle in terms of whether you're going to go over or under. And um, as I, I mean, I'm recalling, we have had, you know, like I think two seasons ago we were under, but then we've had a couple of seasons where we just, you know, it was blowout accumulation, you know, 70 inches. I mean, a couple, not wasn't that long ago. We had like 92 inches of snow accumulation. So um, it, uh, it, it obviously varies. So um, the other X factor uh, again this year is because we'll be rebidding for this coming snow season. Um, this is based on me adding an inflationary kicker onto our existing pricing because that's the best information we have available to us right now. Um, but we'll just kind of have to see how the how the bids come in for for snow this year. That that would just be the one comment that I have is that it, it might be worth. I mean, we've been able to carry forward a surplus the last couple of years, so I don't feel like we're in danger of exceeding our budget. But it, it does seem like we're dwindling that surplus year over year, and it mainly seems to be in snow removal costs. And so, if we don't do it this year, I just I I can't imagine that. I with how expensive labor is becoming, I just I it, it's going to be a more expensive for snow removal. And I think it might be time that we start thinking about either budgeting for more snowfall or making some other adjustment in that budget line. Um, I, 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 I agree with you, uh, John, and especially, you know, next spring when we're meeting with you. Um, once we have the budget numbers, you know, we can certainly, I think that's a really good time to talk about, okay, you know, just because of the way the bids are coming in, you have to adjust your budget. Um, other thoughts on the draft 2022 budget? Would someone like to make a motion to um, adopt the 2022 budget recommendation as drafted, if that's the desire of the group? So moved. Second. Good. Any discussion? Okay. Uh, on the motion to adopt the 2022 budget and work plan recommendation as drafted, I will call the roll. Um, Catherine Bakke. Yes. John Higgins. Yes. John Lasaria. Yes. Linda McDonald. Unmute. Um, Scott McCleary. Yes. Evan Sally. Yes. And Joseph. Yes. All right. That motion is adopted. Um, so thank you. Um, our final uh, items are um, just a couple of board administration. Just uh, if you haven't taken your ethics training, uh, please do that. Um, again, it's good for four years. Um, so uh, we sent those emails out earlier this spring. So if you haven't, please make a note um, to get that done. Um, I would also note we do have one open vacancy on the advisory board. So um, that is a position we can appoint at any time. So if you know of any property owners um, that might be interested in, in serving on the board, uh, 
please let us know. An email introduction um, is quite honestly sufficient. Um, and then we can follow up uh, with them and um, kind of we usually do like a sort of a mini orientation of what the district is and how the, the advisory board uh, functions and its role with, um, uh, you know, guiding the, the, the work of the district. So just wanted to, to note that. Um, are, is, are there any other items the group would like to discuss today? With that, um, oh, I got one thing, yeah. Michael. Go for it, John. So I just kind of had the the idea, and I, I certainly can't do this by myself, um, but I think that we have the opportunity to attract people to the avenue um, for a holiday walk from Black Friday through you know the end through New Year's of any given year, where we've already got all the holiday lights up. And it would be it could be as simple as we light them all at one time, you know, five five thirty on Black Friday, and you know, do some get the word out and really just get people to come to, you know, walk up and down the streets and you know, hopefully spend money at everybody's you know retail businesses. And part of what would bring them in would be encouraging tenants, building owner to do, you know, window displays and. And I'm what I'm thinking is kind of a competition of with two categories: building owner, tenants, and then also for the people that don't want to do it. Like I'm imagining, you know, maybe a laundromat doesn't want to do spend money or effort to decorate their windows. So then having a an artist category that we could match an artist with a storefront. Um, and it seems like a lot of the neighborhoods around have surplus economic development money with no means to distribute it so maybe we could talk to them about getting some prize money um, of that isn't just throwaway money um, and trying to you know make a competition where there's prize money but then there's also marketing announcements that could happen and hopefully we can bring people that you know you, you see it in in Niswa they do it I mean there's for holiday lights up in Duluth, in, in cars, there was a five hour wait. So I think that there is a kind of a pent up demand for people to do some sort of activity in the winter. And um, I think we have everything set up for it. It'd just be a matter of coordination and, and um, some money for marketing, PR, and then also prize money. So is here the, the a prop, appropriate forum or what is it would it be outside of this? Um, yeah, appreciate the question, John. Um, so due to the limits of the items that service district dollars can be used for, um, which in the case of your district, marketing uh, and those types of activities, marketing, programming, things like that are not an eligible use of SSD resources. Um, that is uh, in your district that those sort of that marketing slash PR type of and programming uh, activity really has to fall to outside the service district in terms of a funding source. Okay. So, so everything administration of this, it would really just be not service district work, essentially. Correct. Um, it so your the the law that. Uh, allows the city to have uh, create the service district uh, for Central Avenue has very specific line items on what what are eligible uses, um, which and this is a little different if you if you get if anybody owns property in other districts. Uh, what I'm describing is not universally applicable to all districts in Minneapolis because we have districts that are formed under different enabling legislation. Um, but in the case of your district, marketing and programming administration none of those are eligible items. Uh, okay. There are other things you, the district is not doing, safety and security. There are things that um, SSE dollars in, in your district can be used for that you're not doing. Um, marketing and programming, things like that are, are, are not eligible. Okay. Uh, good question though. Any other questions, comments? 
Hey, just one question for you, and I don't need you to answer it today, but um, you just mentioned that sa that safety and security could be something that we could look at in the future. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't want to explore that right now, but depending on what happens in the district over the next couple of years, and as we see more people out, especially at the bars um, late at night, uh, it might be nice to hear some additional information about that and what some other districts are doing uh in a future meeting yep uh real quick the bullet point list of other districts um we've got a couple of this one district that is doing police buyback directly from mpd um to provide uh beat patrols in their district um so uh, at least one district and a couple more are looking at um security cameras that can be monitored at the police precinct um to help uh, support uh policing and safety efforts um and we've got a couple other districts that are at least early stages exploring uh, some kind of smaller scale ambassador program, similar to what you see in downtown. Um, so uh, those have been um, uh, sort of specifically security related types of activities. Um, you know, expanding the worldview of what safety means keeping your district clean and well maintained is a way to help, you know, uh, uh try to make your district more secure obviously versus looking like an unmaintained district um so uh but in terms of specifically those are those are the three things that districts outside of downtown have uh, at least so far have, have have focused on and certainly happy to continue that conversation um as you can imagine that is a conversation we've had with a number of advisory boards as we've been meeting with them this spring um and some are are being um some districts are more interested than others and are actually implementing things this year. Thank you. Yeah, I'm, I'm most interested in kind of the ambassador pr programs, but uh, I, I don't feel like I wanna be the test district either. Uh, I'd like to see a district figure out how that works and then copy what they're doing. Yeah, the quick version is the economics are just so different compared to downtown, given the resources of what the, the downtown improvement district has relative to a non downtown district. So it's not uh, certainly not impossible. It's just, you know, when you think about an ambassador cost at a full time person and how that relates to what an existing budget is, it, it, it quickly gets to a number that a lot of people can't imagine increasing their service charges for. It doesn't mean it can't be something that can be explored, though. Great question. Anything else? Well, with that, uh, we can adjourn at 50 minutes uh, for this meeting. Um, give everyone uh, the rest of their afternoon. Um, thank you all uh, for participating. Um, we will uh, follow up on uh, several of these items, um, uh, including uh, those recycling lid decals. Catherine, uh, sincerely, thank you for the reminder on that. Uh, oh, I and, have comments before we hang up or uh, once you stop recording, if I can have the group for five minutes. OK, why don't we do this? We will adjourn uh, this meeting uh, of the Central Avenue Special Service District. Thank everyone for participating and we will um, end the recording there.